Welcome back to Multiple Take Triforcing. I'm Rubicon Ranger, and in this episode we're going to talk about tick delay priority networks. So, tick delay priority networks, what does that mean? It basically means a network where all your components are connected to one another by different lengths of connections that determine the order in which components are destroyed, or prioritize some components being destroyed first over others. This type of networking or routing is most effectively used against rail or other high damage single shot weapons, but it's very weak against high fire rate low damage weapons like shredder and small lasers. So use it wisely. It's best used in conjunction with mega plates or other high health components that can cover up the more sensitive routed components and back until they're removed. And it's even better if you can have multiple segments or multiple uh, chambers where damage can be restricted in between each shield. So, uh, what is a tick delay priority network? Basically, it's a way of connecting all the components together in a redundant way so that if nodes are removed, the rest of the system holds itself together. But com certain components will take damage before others. So in this case, I have my shortest connection between my mech legs, and that's only three blocks long. My next shortest connection is my orange, and that goes from my legs to my guns. And then finally, my longest connection is my yellow down here at the bottom, joining my two gun mounts together. What this means is that when damage hits my mech leg, it's going to spread over and it's going to damage my other mech leg before it damages my gun mounts. Likewise, if one of my gun mounts is damaged on four blocks of delay, that means that my orange will tr make the damage travel to my legs before it travels to the other gun mount over the five block long delay. So here you can see it's my damage is reaching my legs before it reaches the other gun mount. Let's scale this up to a larger example. Alright, so here we are in our second example. In this example I'm going to be using components that you would find on a tick delay priority network build, although in a practical build you would want your shields up in front and you'd want quite a few of them. Mega plates are usually the best for this, but in this example we're going to have kind of like a cross section. I'm going to be using uh, the same kind of components that you would see in a tick delay priority network build, such as mega shields and mega weapons, and we're going to be routing them together in a way that would be very similar to how you would set this up if these were the only components you had. Of course, this is going to be kind of like a cross section, so this example is for learning only, but it'll still get the point across. So, we're starting with our two shields, and we're going to connect them with low tick delay connections, since there are health effective components and they're meant to take damage and cover our rest of our connections. So we want them to be destroyed first. So any other connections we make to other components will have to be longer. Next we'll add our weapons, an ion on a rail, since that seems to be a popular thing nowadays, and we're going to connect them up to our shields on four ticks of delay. This means that one shield can be lost and they'll still be held up by the other shield, but damage landing on one shield will have to travel to the other shield before it reaches the other weapon, as you can see. And we have to do quite a few more things here before it's fully set up, so let's add some more components. Let's add a weapon energy module, and we'll hook it up to our guns on a slightly longer delay. Now, damage coming from the gun will have to go to the shields first before it reaches our module. And we're going to add a few more steps to this as well. We're going to add some movement parts. Those are going to route up to our guns and to some other connections. And we're going to add a few more networked components in here that have multiple connections so that the structure can remain interconnected if it takes damage elsewhere. And then finally we're going to connect our guns together through some split protection. Basically just another connection running gun to gun. So in this example, we have it set up so that damage going from gun to gun over this connection is slightly longer and will reach our power module or our shields before the other gun. So in this case you can see the power module is reached and the shields are reached before the other gun is reached. Likewise, we have our movement parts set up on long delay so that damage on our mega rail won't reach the movement components before it reaches the shields. We also have a setup so that in the back here, I have a shorter connection coming off of the mega plates and going to the weapon energy module so that if the weapon energy module is shot directly, it will go to the plates before it travels to either gun. We also have some nodes here. 
In this example, we have nodes, and unlike the other example, they join multiple connections going to multiple components. So in this case, we have it set up so that there's a short delay from this node to the shield. This delay is three, and then four blocks to the shield, and connections coming out of the node go four blocks so that the damage will reach the shields before it reaches any other connections on the, node, on the uh, junction. So in this case, damage coming up any of these lines, once it reaches gray, will have to flow to the shields before it flows to any other component. So for instance, if damage comes from our module here, or from this line above, it can come, either come from this line or from our weapon energy module, and it reaches gray, it has to take another four steps before it gets to another functional component, and this connection here is shorter. So what that means is that and this also functions to keep our structure together if multiple components are severed. So if I have our shields removed, the and maybe even the module, right? This structure will mostly held up through the split protection, but a gun can be shot off and multiple other components can be shot off and this junction will hold multiple components together. So let's go on to a third and more complicated example. Alright, in our third example I'm going to try and go three-dimensional and try to keep it still relatively simple while still incorporating all the same elements from before but handling multiple components and multiple sink sources. So, in this example, we have four large electroplates. Once again, this is not a practical example. It's more meant for learning purposes, but the setups should all be very similar to the previous two examples. So in this case, we're still going to want to join all our shields together, and we can do that with some very short connections, only two blocks this time. But in this case, we're going to have to go one step further for just these electroplates because if we break two electroplates off, such as the corners, the remaining two electroplates will be separated from one another. So we need to make sure all of these nodes in the system are connected to one another. And to do that, we're going to add in another set of connections that go diagonally from shield to shield. There we go. So now we can cut off the corners and we'll still keep the two plates connected to one another. And that goes for both of them. And this also means that if a shield is shot off and there's damage overflow, it can flow to any one of the three remaining shields before another component, although that these connections are slightly longer than the ones that go to the two neighboring adjacent shields. Alright, let's add our weapons. We're going to add our rail and we're going to add our ion here. And we're going to want to connect those to our shields and to later to one another. So let's add some connections. Uh, down here I'm going to do a couple for the ion and we're just going to route them up so that they connect to the smallest or the lowest connection point here and then we're going to do the same thing for the weapon and we're going to add more connections to this rail later but let's continue with our example now that we have those connections in and as before the connections from plate to plate are shorter than the connections from plate to weapon uh, this connection is four steps and the connection in here is four steps so this would be a uh, gambling connection where say you are missing two corner plates and damage comes in through this connection the connection here at the bottom is going to be just the same length as this input so it's a 50 50 if the damage the damage will be split between your remaining shield and your gun in this instance um, if we wanted to make it foolproof, we would add another block of uh, length here, but this might mess with our later connection orders for uh, higher, importance higher importance components like movement parts or modules or whatever, whatever else we want to make higher priority. Sometimes these sort of sacrifices in design have to be made. So continuing on with our example, we're going to do a few more connections. We're going to put in our weapon energy module and we're going to put in our movement connections and they're going to whittle their way through our structure in whichever way they can and let's just go all the way through so that final connection here was just going gun to gun so the blue connection goes down it's one two uh, three four five six seven eight steps to the bottom and what that means is that damage can basically flow to every other component before it flows from gun to gun including to the weapon energy module So, uh, let's look at the rest of the system. Um, I've got a couple junctions here, uh, which are connected in the same way as we saw before. So in this case, our junction is here, 
and the short connection, three steps, goes to the shield next to it, which is the uh, damage sink for this junction. And all other connections are four blocks long coming out of it. So one, two, three, four here to the uh, weapon energy module, and also one, two, three, four here up to our movement part. And this is just interconnecting the structure in a way that if we move com components from it, other components will still be joined by other uh, connections. And the same is going on elsewhere in the structure. And it gets a little confusing, but uh, that's the gist of it. So I can remove our shields, and all the components will still be still held up to one another. I can remove the module, it'll still be connected. I can remove the guns, and it will still be connected to the movement parts. Uh, except this one. This one is only held up by the uh, gun in this instance. Although that seems a little... We may have lost a connection in there somewhere. But generally the structure holds its, itself together no matter what components you remove from it. Alright, and with that example, we're going to move on to some actual real practical builds. I'm going to showcase one of mine very shortly, and then we're actually going to test a build from someone else this time, uh, just so I can get some more people in on the show. Here's a modern example of a tick delay priority network build. This is one of mine. It's a 5 mega plate build with two mega weapons and a weapon energy module, and uh, two propellers, one large and one small. There's very little CPU remaining, so I had to use a tick delay priority network in order to connect up all my remaining components. So it's very rail resistant. It's resistant up to eight rails, uh, seven, eight typical. So it's not completely 100% health efficient, but it's still above 90% health efficient in most cases. Um, it uses five mega plates. Uh, in this case, I've actually got two in front here that are sandwiched between. Uh, the bottom two plates protect my ion, and then the uh, two plates here in the middle protect the rail mount. So shooting through the middle, uh, there's two compartments, basically. There's the first compartment with all the connections in here, and then my second compartment, which ha houses a majority of the connections. This way, if my front shield is shot off, I still have the second shield protecting all the connections behind it, and usually the uh, remaining three plates here stick out and end up taking damage long before this final plate takes damage. But even in that instance, there's still connections that hold up the remaining components in the back. But at that point, small, uh, small rapid-fire weapons would do a lot of damage to me. I'm not going to cover this entire build. I'm just going to cover a few aspects of it. Um, for instance, this uh, multi-junction chain that runs across the top here and what I did with the plates. So in this case, this top plate is routed to the bottom plate through a very short connection. It's uh, like three, four ticks. Yeah, one, two, three, and then this plate or this uh, diagonal arrow rod jumps directly to the bottom plate. So if I if the top plate takes damage, uh, there's a connection coming out of here attaching to the junction, functioning as a sink, and the top plate will or the bottom plate will take damage at the same time as this junction takes damage, so that the damage is split between them. So you can see that red block and the uh, plate taking damage at roughly the same time. Now I could add one more block of delay and uh, make it so that it's a foolproof system, but then the problem is every connection that relies on this being uh, shorter would have to be one block longer and I'd have to add one block to everything else and you have to add one block for every step up in higher priority components along the system. So it becomes more and more expensive. So a lot of the times you have to sacrifice uh, by splitting uh, damage in between two components to protect junctions and stuff like that. but. On the other hand, if damage comes up this line and threatens other connections on the junction, um, it will go to the shield at the same time as it reaches the second node. So you'll see the uh, shield and that second red node light up at the same time as well. And this occurs at multiple points throughout the spot. So uh, all in all, uh, this is a good build, but I don't want to showcase this one. I want to get someone else on the show. So we're going to jump over and we're going to take a look at uh, blue one of Ju Blue Jewel's builds, and then we'll even rail test it.